Hey everybody, welcome to another little project here on Project Nine Oaks. I'm um, going to be working on this rain barrel system that I've got, uh, doing some little finishing touches on it, kind of, uh, you know, kind of dress it up a little bit. I'm, I'm waiting on, a, I guess, a considerable amount of parts for other projects I've got going on. So in the meantime, we're just going to kind of fix up this one, and I'm just going to give you a kind of rundown on what I've got here, and then um, show you some extra little features that I've got on this system that I think you'll get a kick out of and uh, maybe try on your system. Uh, so if you would just follow me along in this project and uh, let's get going. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to be doing today is just kind of supporting this uh, downspout uh, pipe over here. This is where I usually fill up a lot of watering cans. It's kind of, you know, waist level, kind of easy to hold a can up there and uh, turn the valve. But I've worked on this uh, over the years with things that have cracked and whatnot. And so I think it's time to, I never, I've fixed the pipe, but I've never really supported it. So every time I'm just afraid I'm going to crack it. So while I'm doing that, we'll just talk about the system in general, but let's go ahead and, uh, and get this started. So, um, uh, the, the rain barrel system I have here is about 10 years old, maybe a little bit, um, a little bit more than that. And, uh, we set it up here before we built our house. And, um, the plan was to, uh, we were planting plants and stuff like that and, uh, didn't have a way of, uh, getting water over here because the well for our property and our house is actually quite a distance from this barn area. And so I'm kind of on the back side of the barn and it's got a lot of roof space. And so I built these rain barrels um, to kind of collect the water and we'd have a, a way to gather, gather buckets around here and, uh, and to, um, you know, be, be able to water some plants and stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, anyway, it was, it's been kind of a work in progress kind of as I'm, as I'm getting it going. So uh, right now I've got it um, doing pretty good. I have two rain barrels, it's two 55 gallon drums. And um, it's been pretty minimal upkeep, you know, down here in South Georgia, it, uh, you know, doesn't get too frozen. And so we uh, do really don't have to winterize it or anything like that. So it's, it's really just um, emptying it in the winter. Uh, if, if I, a freeze is coming, but usually I haven't had to do much at all with it. Um, and then I started out with one 55 gallon drum and ended up expanding to a second one just because the, uh, uh, I just needed more volume. And so it's, it's worked pretty good for what we needed. And I, I don't think I'll need to upgrade any more than that. Um, I think this, uh, this, you know, 110 gallons or maybe just under 110, um, uh, will uh, will suffice for what we've got. So right now I'll, I'll show you get you some shots of the inlet screens and stuff like that and kind of how the system is all put together and uh, We'll kind of bring you along then on the inside So the inlet uh, for this first barrel comes in and uh, fills up the barrel and I have a three-quarter inch pipe that goes into uh, that, that exits out here at the bottom and uh, it comes out here and it kind of splits off to a couple of T's. I have a, a, it just used to be a clear pipe that goes into the barn and basically goes up the inside of the wall so I can see uh, what the rain barrel level is uh, inside the barn. So good tip is I didn't have this secured really well uh, when I first installed it and it kind of came out of the loop that I put in it and when it filled up with water, uh, this way down and it fell down and I just I was just dumping water into the barn So that was a lesson learned there. So I really secured this to where it's not going to go anywhere on the inside But it's good to see um, You know the level from inside the thing and then what I also did uh, For this is I put this uh, clean out here. So it's just this kind of builds up some algae and um, Now that I've gone to a three-quarter inch outlet it doesn't do it too much, but when I had a half inch before, I would pull this out and just kind of get a wire in there and clean it out. Because sometimes the algae would kind of block off the the exit po port. Um, do have a shutoff valve, and then I have a uh, another pipe going inside the barn, and I'll show you where that goes. And then just a three quarter inch uh, down here to another um, outlet where I'm going to be, you know, have the uh, buckets or or watering cans hooked up. When I added the second one in, I had to. Uh, I, I kind of built it to where the first one would fill up and then it would go across here and it fill up this second one. So this one, um, you know, it doesn't fill up at the same time, but really in any rainstorm, it just fills them both up because the, the amount of rainfall that we'll get, you know, it's easily fills them up in just a few minutes. So what I wa wanted to do with this one is really be able to fill up buckets real fast. So this system is a, a inch and a half outlet 
and this kind of flexible hose and uh, works really well and as you can see I've had a few leaks just uh, doing some flex seal repairs and uh, uh, this brain barrel is about maybe eight years old or so and still going strong no no changes to it or anything um, but you know a little bit of flex seal over the over the years and it fills up buckets I'm I think in about 10 seconds or so it's real easy real quick I can just you know take this hose down and get some buckets on the ground and just you know fill them up with this hose and then carry them around to wherever I need to go so inch and a half I think is a perfect outlet for a uh, for filling up five gallon buckets um, then when this is full you really have to think about an exit so your your overflow I have it coming out the back I'm not sure if you can see it right there so when this second barrel gets full it comes out of that overflow comes down the side meets meets up with another drain that I have coming out of the, the barn there goes under comes across here <laughs> and then it kind of dumps it out in this trough I have and out into the grass so um, you have to kind of think about that whenever you're building these and that you know you, you're going to fill up a rain barrel but you also have to have a place for that water to go when it's when it's overflowing okay, so. so now to the inside which i think is the more exciting part is uh this these rain barrels are hooked up to a sink right here and then over to my right over here it's going to be a toilet so these are uh nothing fancy but it acts as a uh extra water source here in the barn so this is where the uh rain barrel comes into here and I use this to just like you know rinse off some paint brushes or rinse my hands off if it's got like oil on them and stuff so I don't have to run over to the house and you know touch the doorknob and get all that uh, everywhere and kind of you know make the wife angry but uh, so I just kind of give them a good rinse here nothing you know obviously you can't drink this or you don't want to touch your mouth or eyes or anything after it but this is a uh, a nice little uh, sink to have over here and then over here is our toilet so I actually built it up the floor is about four inches higher um, just because of the original floor had this kind of metal uh, you know decking to it so, and the the sides like over there is a uh, um, uh, uh, like a concrete uh, like kind of rim wall that goes around that the that the shed is supported on so I didn't want to put the the drain outlet to the toilet out through that concrete uh, CMU blocks so instead I built up the floor so it'll go out the uh, the uh, the tin of the wall and so it makes it kind of easy so got this uh, toilet here and the water comes in and just hooks up to the tank and so you just you know turn the valve and it fills up the tank actually originally had this to where it would come in from the bottom like a normal toilet would but there's not enough water pressure to push that valve open to fill up the tank so i had to kind of do this way and i just you know sit the uh the tank lid Let's see if i can now it's backwards but you know you get the idea the tank lid just kind of rests on top so just like that so then on the inside the toilet's kind of got a lot of mineral staining but uh it actually works pretty well so i wait for the uh the tank to fill up actually has to fill up quite a lot for it to flush but um I'll go ahead and try it so toilet flushes no problem it's a little slower than normal because it doesn't have that water pressure i think it's just uh, um just using that weight that gravity weight so there you go and then, it, and then uh filling it up again so anyway so that's the toilet itself and we'll go run outside real quick to the uh, septic tank part of this all right so we're back outside and basically the toilet is right on the other side of this wall and uh, the drain comes out comes into this uh, you know uh, elbow piece down into a tank and basically I have a clean out here and if I ever needed to get in there I haven't had to do that in about it's been here about six years or so seven years and uh, drilled some holes you had to found that out the hard way you had to you know that water coming in you got to have that air pressure to um, to get in behind the water so it flows I didn't want to uh, do anything special so I just drilled holes in the top of this so that water goes down this uh, this elbow and then the air can kind of come in behind it and uh, so it doesn't create that vacuum uh, if you didn't if you didn't have that basically the septic tank all it is 
is another 55 gallon drum. Uh, dug a giant hole for it to slide down in, cut the bottom of the, of the barrel off. And then um, the soil down here is really sandy. So that really helps. It just uh, kind of infiltrates pretty quick. And, um, uh, but I, what I did do is put down about four inches of number 57 stone kind of size, maybe a little smaller than that, uh, which is about, I don't know, like um, three quarter inch, you know, half inch size stone, uh, but no fines, just, just straight, you know, that size stone. So it makes a nice void space for that water to, to, um, uh, to sit down in there and infiltrate even more. So uh, if you have clay soil, like I really wouldn't recommend this, that, that's so, uh, that water, hopefully it's mostly water coming out of here, is gonna just sit on that clay and not infiltrate really fast. Um, you can do an infiltration test uh, before doing this to make sure, but uh, you know, if you have some clay soils, you know what that looks like versus sand. You know, we have you know, almost, almost beach sand-like soil, so it's uh, pretty conducive for infiltration. And actually, we're not using this that much, so we still have a 55 gallons of, uh, of space to fill up, so hopefully it never gets that full. But I, I, when I originally built it, I was using um, just, you know, common sense that I have a 55-gallon drum that is inputted into the, the toilet, and I have a 55 gallon drum that's the exit. So uh, should be about the same. So I would never, unless it just keeps raining a bunch and it's filling up that inlet tank. But uh, it, we, we don't use this all that much. It's not like a, a, a thing we do every day right, for sure. So uh, it's just kind of one of those um, kind of neat amenities. And we, we actually had it here before we built our house. So uh, it was used more then. But anyway, it's just kind of a neat feature. Um, so uh, to have on this. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, uh, kind of finish up with that. You know, this is the, the end of the line, I guess you'd say, for the, for the rain and uh, if it's used inside. So um, appreciate you sticking around for this, this video. I just kind of wanted to give you a, an idea of what I got here of this my uh, rain barrel system. Actually worked out really well. Hey, this is our, our cat Romeo is coming to say hey. Um, and, uh, you know, hope this helps you out for your rain barrel project. If you are on the fence and trying to work out one for you, um, I would highly recommend getting one of these, kind of working out whatever system works for you. Um, to give you an idea of when we, our first house we ever lived in, um, we had a, uh, um, a small one and it was uh, a little bit, you know, not quite this extensive. It was just a more of a Tupperware container, kind of a big one that I put just at the bottom of the, the gutter downspout and I was using that and I could just, it was on the ground. So I just siphoned water out of it into buckets to, to water, you know, plants around the house so nothing fancy but it was a good learning experience just kind of start off small and uh and work your way up so for this system it's actually been pretty good 100 gallons is kind of a nice round number to go to have as a goal and uh we've used it around here watering plants around the barn but i do tell you it came in really handy when we did have a hurricane come through here and we knocked out power for several days and uh without power we don't have water because we're on a well so uh that uh, this rain barrel water was used to fill the toilets in the house, so we were able to uh, to, to keep those going uh, during that hurricane. So um, it is a nice, just kind of a peace of mind kind of thing to have, I think. Um, you're not going to drink it, at least at our setup, we're not drinking it or anything like that. We're just watering plants, you know, potential for... Uh, uh, emergency uh, toilet refilling, I guess you'd say. But um, anyway, it's just a nice uh, project, I think, and uh, just just uh, something good to have. So um, anyway, again, I hope this uh, helps you out on your project. And uh, if you would, if you would subscribe to this channel, we got more projects coming up once these parts come in. And uh, if you would like this video and share it with uh, with your friends, appreciate it.